Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So I have a quick word for y'all uh, this morning. I want to talk about being a faithful steward over the gifts that God has given you. God created us uh, with gifts. Each of us, he has uh, created intricately with all types of gifts and your gift might be cooking my gift might be prophesying my gift might be singing my gift might be a spirit of excellence in whatever it is that i do your gift might be encouraging your gift might be singing your gift might be praise dancing your gift may be a number of things the bottom line is this is that when god created us he created us all with unique gifts right and he created us with these gifts so that we can then take these gifts to serve to other of his children, to serve to other people in the body of Christ, to serve to others. That is why he gifted us with these things so that we can use our gifts and be faithful stewards over the gifts that he has created within us and that he has put within us. Now, there is this scripture that everybody loves to quote. And the scripture is basically saying that your gift will make room for you and bring you in front of great men. Okay, that is so true. And so we like to... To say that and quote that scripture because we know that God's word is true and that is true, but we don't think about the back end of what that looks like. When we quote, quote that scripture and we say that your gift will make room for you, what we envision in our mind, we envision our gift being dispersed to the masses and the masses welcoming our gifts, but we don't think and conceive what it looks like on the back end of our gift making room for us. And a lot of times what it looks like on the back end, it's not pretty. A lot of times what you will find on the back end of the process of our gift making room for us, we'll find that our gift is typically rejected in the wrong room. What do I mean by the wrong room? Yes, your gift will make room for you in the right room, in the right places. But your same gift that is good, that will make room for you if you take that that gift right and you continuously try to disperse it and share it and serve it in the wrong room guess what you tend to encounter you tend to encounter rejection you tend to encounter abnormal resistance you tend to encounter abnormal uh, objection to you serving your gift uh, I'm gonna give you an example let's say for example God has you in a workplace and your gift is excellence like you are not perfect none of us are but your gift is to do whatever it is that you have in front of you with a spirit of excellence and that is your gift unfortunately right now you're in a job under a certain leadership where they do not cultivate and appreciate and value your gift of excellence and so as you're trying to serve that gift in the wrong room you are encountering abnormal resistance. We know that when you try to do good, the devil and his little imps are going to always try to come and give you some some sort or some kind of resistance that is to be expected. But I, when I say abnormal resistance and objection, abnormal rejection, what I'm talking about is when you find yourself trying to serve your gift in the wrong room and you are having to fight to keep your gift alive. That is not what God intended for your gift. God intended for you to serve your gift. He created you with this gift to serve it right in the right room. And a lot of times we, it takes for us to serve our gift in the wrong room and experience the rejection, right? In order for us to be pushed and catapulted into the right room that will make room for us in our gift, right? The scripture is correct where it says that your gift will make room for you. Yes, it will, but it will make room for you in the right environment and in the right room. And so if you are frustrated and you are encountering abnormal resistance to your gift in certain places, Places and in certain environments and so in within certain people, if you are encountering that abnormal, abnormal, abnormally high levels of rejection, that is an indicator that you are trying to serve your gift in the wrong room. And I want to look at what Jesus did. Y'all all know the story about how Jesus in his hometown was not respected. And he went to try to perform miracles and to try to perform wonders in his hometown. And what he encountered was rejection. Now, what did Jesus do? Did Jesus sit there and spend all his time and his effort trying to 
fight to keep his gift alive in that environment. No, he didn't. Did Jesus sit there and try to change everybody in his hometown so that they would be accepting and appreciative and value and, and, and have, did he try to change these people in his hometown so that they would have the value and appreciation and receive and welcome his gift that his gift deserved? Did he do that? Or did Jesus say, you know what? You don't give respect. A prophet is not welcome nor appreciated in his hometown. And I tell you what I'm going to do. I ain't going to stay here and keep serving my gift to you. What I am going to do because I'm a faithful steward of the gift that God has given me. What I am going to do is take my gift on down the road someplace else and serve my gift to the right people in the right room who will value and appreciate whatever it is that I bring to the table. And so my word for you today is this, is that God has gifted you uh, with all types of unique gifts. And if you are finding that you are having to fight every single day to serve this beautiful gift that God is giving you, if you're finding that you're having to fight every day to serve that gift, if you're finding that the people in the environment that you're in, that they they don't value your gift. They don't identify it. They don't acknowledge it. They don't appreciate it. They have no value for it until it's beneficial to them until they need it. That is an indicator that you are serving your gift in the wrong room. Your gift will make room for you, but in the right room. I want to turn, uh, want you to turn to Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Peter, and I'm going to go down in the fourth chapter, right? And I'm going to skip a few verses, but I want to read you two verses. And as I'm talking about how in the wrong room, you will encounter abnormal uh, objection, rejection, and resistance when you're trying to serve your gift. Listen at this, 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse. I want to read this verse. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. When you are having to fight to keep your gift alive in front of these people and they are abusing your gift, taking advantage of your gift, they are living recklessly and they have no value for you and what you bring to the table, right? They tend to look at you and say, why won't you join in? Why are you not fitting in with us? And they don't even realize the abuse and the disrespect that they have for the gift that God has given in you. I want to go down to the 10th verse. And it says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. The gift that God has given you, the gifts that he has put within you are all forms of God's grace. That is not the only way that you see God's grace, but it is one of the many forms of God's grace. One of the many forms of God's grace is the gift that he puts inside of you. And we have to remind ourselves to be faithful stewards over the gifts that God has given us and that he has put within us, take our gifts and serve it. But if you are finding that you have to fight to keep your gift alive, that is a clear indicator that you are casting your pearls before the swine. And you have to remember what Jesus did. Jesus did not try to make the people value him. He did not try to make the people appreciate his gift. He did not make the people try to change the people. He did not try to make the people change to become who they should be. Instead, Jesus saw what was in front of him and he went on down the road someplace else and guess what happened them people welcomed him with open arms and they loved him and that is the same way that it is going to be with with your gift when you serve your gift in the right room to the right people i love you i am grace amber i'm going to be right back on tomorrow